Well, good morning, everybody. I'm seeing a lot of people on the screen here. Welcome, candidates, to the launch of our uh, platform for 2020. We're here on the traditional territory of the Squamish, Musqueam, and tsleil -Waututh First Nations. And I'm very grateful to Michelle, Alvin, and Marcelina for sharing their stories to get us started on the challenges uh, that they faced during the pandemic and the, what they want to see in their future. We all know that COVID-19 has challenged and changed British Columbia. People are looking to a future that is uncertain. They're looking to a future that they're, they just don't know where to turn. They want to ensure that their government is focused on them. Today we're launching our Working For You platform for the coming four years, and it lays out a vision for British Columbia that focuses on people and the services that they need to make sure that we come out of the pandemic stronger than we went in. Andrew Wilkinson and the BC Liberals want to take us backwards. They want to take us back to a time when government focused on the wealthy and the well-connected and cut services for people. They looked at tax breaks for those who needed them least, and forgot about those that needed help the most. His plan put the biggest benefits where they weren't necessary. I want to focus on the people that are here today and other British Columbians that are looking forward to a government that continues to focus on their needs now and into the future. Mr. Wilkinson's plan would call for higher costs for people, whether it be back to the old days of medical services premiums, high car insurance costs, hydro rates, tolls on bridges, and on it would go. And to pay for their plan, they want to cut services like health care and child care, so critically important to British Columbians at this time. We can't afford to go back. We need to make sure that we have a government that faces the problems of today and takes them on squarely with the purpose of making life better for all British Columbians. 16 years of BC Liberal neglect created a number of problems, and we're committed to solving them. Our plan today is guided by four basic principles. Principles that will help us create a province that we want now and in the future. Firstly, a more affordable province for everyone. Lasting and meaningful reconciliation with Indigenous people. A better future through fighting climate change. And ensuring that workers and small businesses are put at the front of our economic recovery. Our plan will build on where we are with stronger services for people, always making sure that their needs are met where they live and when they need them. And we'll meet this challenge by focusing on getting to zero emissions with respect to our climate action plan by 2050. Always working with Indigenous peoples to ensure that everyone in British Columbia benefits from the bounty and wealth and wisdom and, and, and uh, innovation of our people. Today's platform includes 154 commitments 60 which are brand new, the rest building on the work that we've already started. We have three basic priorities. Better health care for you and your family, affordability and security in your home and in your community, and good jobs and livelihoods in, an, in a clean energy future. Universal public health care is what defines us as British Columbians and Canadians. It has never been more important than during COVID-19. To improve health care for you and your family, we want to make sure that we're delivering faster, better health care closer to home. That means continuing with more hospitals, more urgent primary care centers, and diagnostics. And we'll launch BC's second medical school to train doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners, and other health care providers right here in BC. We'll also make BC a leader, as they have been, in cancer care by launching a 10-year cancer care action plan. And it will include more individual care and more resources invested in treatment and research. The BC Cancer Agency is renowned. We want to make sure that the next 10 years take us to the next level with respect to making sure that people who are afflicted with cancer have the services that they need and the researchers that are here in British Columbia have the tools to make breakthroughs as they've been doing over the past number of years. And we will also, of course, as we said during the campaign to this point, be investing significantly in long-term care and home care for seniors so they can be safe and healthy and live their final years in dignity. And that's, of course, what they deserve. We'll also build on the hiring of 7,000 uh, new frontline health care workers to make sure our seniors are safe, giving opportunities to those who've been displaced by COVID-19 so they can build a new future and a new career right here in their own community. And with Marcelina in mind, we'll continue to fight 
and make sure the federal government is focused on a national pharmacare plan so we can bring down the cost of pharmaceuticals to make life more affordable for British Columbians. For the past three years, we've worked hard to make our homes and our neighborhoods more affordable and safer. But there's much more work to do. Our plan provides a one-time $1,000 recovery benefit to help families and $500 for individuals. We'll make life more affordable by freezing rents into 2021 and capping rent increases to the cost of inflation. We'll also help uh, families with children by expanding our $10 a day childcare plan and ensuring that transit is free for kids under 12. Right there. <laughs> Uh, these new initiatives will build on the progress we've already made. And we'll continue with our housing plan, which has already seen 25,000 affordable homes either built or underway. And we'll continue to expand our transit options to growing areas of British Columbia, cutting ICBC premiums by up to 20%, and making sure that everyone benefits from moving around in British Columbia without tolls, without costs. We're going to try and make sure those costs are as low as they possibly can be, connecting communities through the lower mainland and throughout British Columbia. And as we recover, now is the time, and I'm, in my opinion and the opinion of my colleagues, that we build an economic recovery that works for everyone. Instead of tax cuts that benefit the top 1% of British Columbians, our plan will take 1% of GDP and put it into a new recovery investment fund. This $3 billion fund will be above and beyond the $23 billion we're already spending on capital projects and infrastructure so we can build more schools, more hospitals, more transit, more childcare spaces, and all of the other things British Columbia needs to meet our full potential. This plan will create 18,000 jobs a year and put people back to work who've been affected by COVID-19. We'll also move our, to our country-leading climate action plan. And I want to take a moment to thank uh, Dr. Weaver and the Green Caucus for working with the BC NDP to have the strongest climate action plan in North America. But there's much more to do. We need to build on that by investing in creative new technologies and making sure we're training the next generation of scientists and engineers to build that future in a safe, environmentally sustainable way. And that means training people here in British Columbia to take on the challenges, not just here, but internationally. We have been world leaders. We need to continue being world leaders. You don't do that by closing doors on people. You do that by opening up the doors of opportunity. Our plan also provides for small and medium-sized businesses to get the grants that they need to protect over 200,000 jobs. That's building on the Stronger BC plan, the economic strategy that we announced last month. And of course, hard-hit tourism operators will have a special opportunity uh, to top up those grants in, in communities right across British Columbia. The challenges we face over the next four years are profound. I believe we need a strong, stable government to focus on the needs of British Columbia, the needs of the people of this great province. The question British Columbians have to ask themselves over the next two weeks is where do they want to go and who do they want to lead them? I believe our plan puts people squarely in the driver's seat. British Columbians are my highest priority each and every day. I'm always focused and have been in my entire time in the legislature and certainly having had the privilege of being the premier for the past three and a half years, I've always focused on making sure that those without voice, those without the wherewithal to buy what they need, have a government that's focused on them. The BC Liberals have another approach. The wealthy and the well-connected are what they focus on. That's not for me. I believe that British Columbians deserve a government that gets up every day working for them. That's what I'm offering today, and I want to thank people for dialing in. I want to thank my friends for joining me here today to get the message out that BC is people, the economy is people. It's as simple as that. If we focus on each other, we lift each other up, we'll be better off after this pandemic gets past us.